Let, let's now move to talk about you, your story. So um, how, how did you get to be in the, the Chamber of Commerce? I've read a bit about your background. It's quite varied and interesting. Yeah, it is a very different career. I've been really lucky. I've worked with some uh, for some of the, the world's great companies. So I spent I graduated as an electronic engineer. Um, didn't spend too long as an engineer. I was more in the project management side, then moved into the you know the sales um, side. Actually worked um, with the South Australian Government Radio Network. Um, so I uh, managed the southern half of Australia for um, a period with Motorola. So I was a regular in South Australia. So the Motorola network that oh, okay. you know, yes. runs your police and emergency yep, services yes. had a hand in that um, as well. Um, and then moved into managing the, the channel distribution, ended up running Asia Pacific for Motorola, so, which great career, great company, great career. Um, 17 years, I, I stayed there, moved to Vodafone, spent about three years with Vodafone, and again, regular in South Australia with uh, one of my counterparts over there. Um, Vodafone sold out of Australia with the deal that they did. I took a break and just started consulting a bit. I figured after 20 years and a lot of travel, it was time to spend a bit more time with my family. I had a young family at the time, so you know, daughter Daniela, um, son Matthew and another son Stephen. My wife has been incredible all the way through this, supporting my career as she took a break from hers to raise the kids. Um, I then ended up um, running Asia Pacific for a company called United Health Group, okay. which no one will have heard of. It's the seventh largest company in the world. Um, and what they don't do in health isn't worth knowing about. So it kind of whetted my appetite a little bit in terms of what are the possibilities within Asia Pacific for health, particularly around that population demographic um, side. If, if Medibank had trade sale, then United Health Group would have bought it. That's how large the company um, okay. is. Five years there, a lot of time in an aeroplane between the UK, Singapore and the US. They were headquartered in Minneapolis. Um, Again, travel, my daughter going into year 12, I thought that was probably enough. Along the way, I chaired the board of the Queen Victoria Market, which is one of That's Australia's market. iconic markets. Yeah, it's kind of a, my grandparents, uh, when they came to Australia, traded into the Queen Vic Market. Okay. So when I was approached to join the board, it was kind of finishing that circle. They survived in Australia because of um, the Queen Vic, so I thought it was my duty to go back and, and help that. Ended up running the Melbourne Showgrounds or the Royal Agricultural Society, which I know South Australia has a strong society as well, and that was a privilege to see you know the community come together, the community activate um, that once a year, but with all the awards programs, and then you know the opportunity to you know do something different for Victoria in terms of being that advocate voice for business. I figured I had a good background in both multinationals, community business and small business, and I figured I could add my voice to that. Yes, okay. That, that is quite a great experience. And uh, mm. yes, it's it interesting to read through that on LinkedIn. And now you mentioned your, your grandparents coming out to Australia. So tell us, where, where does the name Guerra come from? Yeah, so it's San Marco in Lamas. San Marco in Lamas. Um, the, yeah, so the Fogian region or the Puglia um, part. So all four grandparents come out of that. So on my dad's side, the Guerra name. Yes. Um, so my grandfather, um, and I met um, my grandfather and grandmother on the Guerra side. Grandfather came out, um, made his way to um, Melbourne and then out to the regions. He ended up setting up a farm in Shepparton. Believe it or not, um, he, my grandmother was pregnant. Um, he left to come to Australia. Oh. Ten years later, He'd saved enough money to bring her and his son, who he hadn't met, out. Ten years. Ten yes, years. Yes. Incredible in today's age. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then my father was born um, shortly after my grand. Well, yeah, twelve months after my grandma came out, and then my auntie was uh, born two years later uh, from that as well. So there were three kids settled on a farm in Shepparton East. Eventually sold um, the farm when my father got to um, secondary school age came to live in uh, West Preston, and that's where they remained until um, they died. Grandfather died 88, grandmother died 87 um, years of age, both incredibly strong people, you know, you know, self-educated, self-taught, um, strong people. And whilst they only spoke broken English, um, and of the time I was growing up, being Italian wasn't the best thing to be, yeah. given all the racism around, um, we, we had a way of communicating that was different. On my mother's side, which is the Nardella, um, side. Um, uh, my grandfather was originally slated to come to or to go to Canada um, in his celebrations the night before he was due to depart. Um, had a bit too much to drink, 
lost his passport. By the time he had that reissued, um, the migration to Canada had stopped. He had a choice to go to Australia or the US. He chose Australia. He's credited. He settled in Mount Taylor with my grandmother. Um, they moved to Sylvan. So the Sylvan Manufacturing Company, which um, is alive and well in agriculture, he was one of the hands in that. Okay. He's credited with starting roadside selling um, of okay. strawberries, as it turns out, um, in this state. He died very young. He was 56 when he died, um, four months before I was born. So I never got to meet him. Um, my grandmother on the Nardella side, she lived to 96, um, lived by herself up until pretty much the last two months and had a wicked sense of humour, just a <laughs> lovely, lovely person. Um, my mum was one of eight kids. So, wow. you know, really strong extended family and that's lucky on the Italian side. We, we know how to respect family. We know how to engage with family. I've got you know, cousins um, everywhere, which, you know, I enjoy catching up with, particularly as we get older as well. Uh, cool. And have you visited um, Italy or Puglia? Yeah, I've been to um, Italy, been to Puglia. My wife's family is from um, Sicily. Her mum and dad were born there before they uh, okay. came out. We decided that rather than go and get caught up with the family in the first uh, visit, we would try and see a bit of Italy. Okay. So yeah. I've been back several times, um, a lot for work, um, a couple social. Um, but it's, yeah, every time I go back, it, I had an amazing experience, Antonio, the first time we went back. We were with uh, my wife, Amelia, and our three kids, and as... We, we, we drove from Paris um, into Italy, so we, we bopped along the, the southern coast of France. And amazing experience when we hit the border of France and, and Italy, just that feeling of, of actually I feel home. Being home, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's inexplainable. Uh, we hit it at 100 k's an hour, and it's like just a really weird feeling. So it was yeah, really nice to be back to you know, where my grandparents and where Amelia's parents had come from as well. Yes, I, I hear that often, and it's um, it's interesting how that happens. Cool, good, good, good. Well, um, again, thank you very much for taking this call. Um, I know you're busy. In fact, we've had to reschedule things a couple of times, but it's good. Very happy that we've managed to, to have this conversation. Um, and thank you for for, for giving <laughs> this message from Victoria to the, the people of uh, Radio Italia Uno. Pleasure, and thank you for having me.